I'm going to do exactly the same kind of reasoning, but now for a different type of product. And I'm going to switch from the continuous product to an annual product. So that means I'm going to look at a life insurance product with a debt benefit of one euro, uh, which is payable at the end of the year of death of the policyholder. And the policyholder is now HX uh, years old, right? So instead of saying, I'm going to pay the benefit immediately on the death of my policyholder, I'm now saying I'm going to pay this benefit at the end of the year, right? At the beginning of the year would not make sense because of course, at the beginning of the year, we don't know yet that our policyholder will die in that particular uh, year. So the only thing that makes sense is paying at the end of the year in which the policyholder dies. So what do we need to do? to do? We need to picture the same timeline as before, but we're gonna leave the continuous time perspective and we're gonna work with paying at the end of the year of death. So this is a discrete time setting. We work with yearly time periods and we work with, a, with an insurance benefit with a debt benefit of one euro. The payment date is again unknown. And because of that, the present value of this uh, debt benefit will also be unknown. And here is my picture. So I'm gonna look again at a policyholder who's X year old at time zero. And I'm gonna ask myself, yeah, okay, if, if this policyholder dies between time K and K plus one, for example. So if he dies in this time interval, I'm gonna pay the debt benefit at the end of the year of death. So that means I'm gonna pay the one euro at time K plus one, right? So if this happens, if this scenario unravels over time, then the present value of my debt benefit would be e to the power uh, minus delta times k plus one, or it would be discounting from k plus one to the present moment. That's indicated here in red, right? Um, what is the probability that this scenario will unravel over time? That's the probability that you survive until hx plus k. And then for an individual with hx plus k, this individual should die within one year from there. So the probability that this scenario happens is kpx multiplied with qx plus k. So survival for k years in blue multiplied with one year probability of dying, the qx plus k. So be very careful, the discounting here is with v to the power k plus one or with e to the power minus delta times k plus one. Very often on the exam, people will use v to the power k when valuing a life insurance product in discrete time, but that, that doesn't make sense here huh? because you have to pay the one euro at the end of the year of death, not at the beginning of the year of death. If you put that all together, uh, we'll see that if kx is equal to k, so that means the current future lifetime is equal to k, so that means the whole number of years that you're gonna live is k, so that means you're gonna die between k and k plus one, right? So that's exactly the scenario we're gonna, uh, we're picturing here on, on the timeline. So if k is equal to, kx is equal to k, then my present value random variable takes this value here at the bottom, e to the power minus delta multiplied with k plus one. So uh, what is the remainder for us to do? Let this k take all the possible values that it can take. So to um, express this expected value, huh, that's what we're gonna do. So first of all, the present value random variable here is once again denoted with z, but now it is equal to v to the power kx plus one. So in the previous setting, I had v to the power tx. Tx was working in continuous time, but now I need to work with the curted future lifetime and I need to add plus one because I'm gonna pay at the end of the year of death, right? So the present value random variable, this product is V to the power KX plus one. If we look at the expected value of this uh, Z guy, we're looking at the expected value of V to the power KX plus one. We've got a symbol for that. That's the notation AX without the bar, 
because the bar was referring to a continuous product and now we're looking at a discrete time product. What is the big difference between this formula and the one uh, we previously used? E, the expected value of V to the power of Tx. And now we have the expected value of V to the power of Kx plus one. If you look at the two random variables that are involved, the Tx versus the Kx, then their biggest difference is that the Tx is continuous and the Kx is a discrete random variable, right? So that's something you really have to keep in mind throughout this course. Are you dealing with a continuous random variable or with a discrete random variable? Because we know for the continuous random variables, we use the density function, we use the hazard rate. For the discrete random variables, we use the so-called probability function. Huh? So we know what is the probability that kx is equal to k. We can express that for a discrete random variable. So if I do that, um, I'll get the following scheme. So if I look at the expected present value of my one euro benefit for a discrete whole life insurance product, then I need to know what is the PF of KX. So recall the PF for me, that's the probability function. Huh? That's this uh, collection of probabilities that all together determine the distribution of KX. And KX, once again, it's a discrete random variable. It's something you really have to keep in mind, right? So if we look at the probability that KX is equal to K, that's something we discussed on Monday together, right? We know that that is the probability that Tx is beyond k minus the probability that Tx is beyond k plus one, right? And we can write it as follows if you prefer to use the other type of notation that we introduced uh, so far. I'm using here the deferred uh, mortality probability. So that means you need to survive until Hx plus k, and then you need to die within one year from reaching Hx plus k. If I have this probability function, then I can write the expected value of a transformation of the discrete random variable kx. I can write it as follows. So this is again this law of the unconscious uh, statistician, but now I'm using it with a discrete random variable. So just to, and this was for a continuous setting. So this was for a continuous random variable. Right, and now I want to do exactly the same thing, but for a discrete random variable. Okay. So what I'm looking for is the expected value of a transformation G of Kx, right? With Kx, a discrete random variable. And I know from what I learned in my coursework that if I do something like this with X, a discrete random variable, then in that case, I should run over all the values x, small x, that this variable can take. And I should do g evaluated in x multiplied with the probability that x is equal to x, right? And this is a sum expression. On the previous uh, sheet, I, of course, had an integral expression because there I was working with a continuous random variable. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. When we need to value this insurance product, we're going to sum over all the values k that our uh, curted future lifetime can take. And we're going to do um, was uh, v to the power kx plus one, right? That was my transformation that I'm considering in this case. So if I write down the valuation formula, then I'll end up with something of the form v to the power k plus one times the probability that kx is equal to k, right? So that's my uh, valuation form. And that's what I had uh, over here uh, as well. We can do the second moment. That's just the same kind of reasoning as before. You look at the expected value of z to the power two you replace the z with the expression that you have over here and you notice that okay then that's the same kind of expression but instead of using v we're now going to use v to the power two we're going to use v squared right 
And of course, we have a similar actuarial notation. So that's the two, where the two is a um, superscript at the left hand side of my symbol, the two a x. If I have the second moment, if I have the first moment, I get the variance of this uh, random variable that represents the present value of my whole life insurance uh, policy with a debt benefit of uh, one euro that is payable at the end of the year of death. And that variance is the second moment minus squared the first moment.